And the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God. In a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth be edified by you. May those who are listening get something that will help change their lives. Let it be me moving out of the way and your Holy Spirit moving in, Lord. So let us begin our worship through the word. Amen. I was looking at our liturgy this week, and even though I'm not using one of those um, scripture lessons that we read earlier, what I chose to do contains the essence of what our liturgists were trying to sell us. And the essence of most of what we read today has to do with sin. And sin has been with us for such a long time. And I thought it would be helpful to use this third Sunday of Lent as a reminder of how captivating sin can be and how we have to guard ourselves against it. The title of my text is Redemption. And I hope that you will listen intently because this story has been told before, but I just want to reiterate some of what we know because oftentimes we need reminders. But before I go there, I'd like to share this little joke. And I heard it on a, a, a Christian radio station one day, and I know I may not get it exactly right, but I want to share it anyway. Um, one day Adam and God was walking in the garden one evening and Adam turned around and he asked God why did you make Eve so pretty and God said so you would love her and so Adam said well why did you you give her such a beautiful smile and he said so you could love her and then Adam again said, but God, why did you make her so dumb? And God said, so she would love you. <laughs> so there's just some laughter that we can get out of um, the things that we do sometimes and the things we say. The Bible does have some wonderful moments. Even though we deal with sin from day to day, and it confronts us from day to day, we can have joy in the knowledge of God's redemption. So, as we move to the text, in the Bible, y'all, we, 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 we sometimes find that there's limited information about women. And we see that the decisions that women made and the actions that women took in the Bible were very important, whether we hear about many of them or not. We hear about few of them. All the women that we learn about were very important to salvation history. And so my text has a lot to do with the fact that this also is Women's History Month. And then I, want, I did not want to leave it without saying something about women. And so today I wanted to revisit the mother of all women, the mother of life, Mother Eve. You know, Eve had it all. 
Eve came into the world, she was God's gift to man. She was the best flower of the garden. She had it all. She had perfect peace with God, and she had perfect peace with her husband, Adam. And they were the only people in the planet. They lived in paradise. They had everything they needed. Eve never knew a moment of embarrassment. She never knew hurt. She never knew pain. She had none of these things in the beginning. I know y'all have heard this story over and over again. We heard it as children. We hear it as adults, but I really need us to get back to it and understand exactly what happened. This is my version. Eve took her eyes off of God. She stopped looking to God for the truth. She even stopped looking to her husband for advice. She stopped looking at what good she had and she wanted more. She started looking at the good fruit she already had. And she thought that the grass was greener on the other side. Okay. We know who the next character is in this drama. In this Eve story. And that is the serpent. The serpent's last name is the father of all lies. Lies. He lies and he twists words. He misquotes. He spins his deceitful schemes. He did it then and he's doing it now. He's doing it now in greater numbers. So now, in this Eve story, we have this sneaky, conniving, and deceitful serpent. And Eve listened to him. This cold-bellied, slimy, slick Rick serpent. Eve's first mistake was listening, y'all. She listened. She took time to hear him instead of running away. This prince of darkness cost her almost everything. Here, eat. Eve ate. Then she gave to Adam and he ate. Sounds like evil to me. Listening to Satan who wants us to think about other things we have no business thinking about. Every time he gets in our mind and we start thinking the things that are not of God and he's tempting us in our mind, we minimize things that are of God. Eve started looking at the forbidden. Y'all know the deal. She's always reaching. We, we, we always reaching for the forbidden. You know, we do this even when our conscience is screaming no. We know somehow in our mind something ain't quite right. We get a little inkling of things. And we know when we are dealing with something we're not supposed to be. None of you here have done this, I don't guess, any time recently. You know, the serpent has all kind of tricks. And that is the first thing that he does do. He starts attacking us in our mind. He starts getting into our thoughts. He starts getting us to doubt. And that is the first thing that led Eve to question God's word start doubting what God had already told her was the deal. So, 
Now, have you ever done something or said something that changed your course of your life? Have y'all ever done anything like Eve that you wish you could take back? Well, we know every time we take our eyes off God, we blow it. Just like Eve did, Eve blew it. And we have these questions that we ask. We can ask how in the world could a person who had all these good things going for them blow it? Eve's decision, y'all, to do her own thing led her to her own unexpected and painful consequences. She suffered some painful blows. Mm -hmm. That one decision takes her from paradise to the valley of loss and pain. It took its toll. It took its toll on her. It took its toll on Adam. Yeah. And it took it's toll on her entire family. It was a terrible, terrible blow wow. that took place. You see, what they thought was a casual conversation, trying a little forbidden fruit, turns out to be the action that harmed them for a long, long time. Well, y'all, in this life, we too mm -hmm. can find ourselves absorbing some painful blows. Painful blows. So let's take a closer look at what the mindset of Eve must have been like after this happened after her fall they went through a lot of stuff y'all they did suffer some terrible blows they had this blow of being kicked out of paradise they had this blow of being banished from the presence of almighty God they used to walk with him and talk with him they had presence of his company through the day. It took a toll on their heart. It was a thought of what might have happened if only, if only they had listened. If only they had made the right choice. If you had only listened, if you had only made the right choice, it can haunt you for the rest of your life. I know some of you know what it feels like for the promises and the provisions of God for you has become null and void. It has changed, not like it used to be. What happens is you experience an emotional downturn. You go to a place of depression. You go to weeping till you can't weep no more. You move toward a, a, a type of what I'll call emotional bankruptcy. You're beyond yourself. You are beyond sorrow and you are beyond grief. You're at a place where you're battling for your mental stability. It's a period where your emotions have taken you beyond the level of feeling you no longer feel grief. You are grief. You no longer feel sad. 
you become sad. You no longer feel depressed. You become depressed. You, you, you enter the place that is beyond the emotion. You are no longer feeling shame. You are shame. And when you absorb too many blows at one time, it's more than anybody can be expected to bear. But what can you do in the midst of such blows? What can you do in the midst of such blows? The first thing is you must encourage yourself in the Lord. You must quiet yourself. You must think of all the things God has already done for you. You need to talk to God again and again. You need to moan to God if you can't do anything else. You need to go to God and you need to stay in God's presence. If you can't talk anymore, you can just say, Jesus, Jesus. You can tie a knot on the end of your rope and just hold on to it. You can call on God's strength when you don't have any more strength. It's no more hiding from God. You have nowhere else to go. You can't do anything but go to him. No matter what. You know why? Because he sees you. He knows your pain. So you go to God and you learn that he will give you the strength to endure. Learn what the psalmist learned when they wrote Psalm 51. The psalmist said, have mercy on me, God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out all my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, God, against you alone do we sin and do what is evil in your sight. So you are justified, God, in your sentence, and you are blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, we are born guilty. We are sinners when our mother conceived us. But you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach us wisdom in our secret heart. Purge us with hyssop and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Let us hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed begin to rejuvenate and rejoice. Hide your face not from our sins, and blot out all our transgressions and our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart. Put a new and right spirit within us. And do not cast away us from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit especially from us. Restore us, God, to the joy of your salvation. And sustain us and make us willing in our spirit. So let's go back to Mother Eve and think about all the things that she bore and all the life changes of being thrown out of paradise that she had to deal with. She had to sweat and toil. And she mostly had to bear the pain of her own treachery to God. How does she do it? I want you to listen to this. Eve gives birth again. She was grasping 
for something to ease her pain. She was clawing at this pain, wanting to feel whole again. And she comes to feel her child growing inside of her, feeling her. And she feels this newborn baby pressing forward for a way of escape. And you can hear the cries of the mother and child as they mingled like two streams flowing together. And Seth is born. She has lost two children. And God gives her newness of life again. And with this child cradled at her breast, you can see relief spreading across Eve's face. And Eve rests. And a smile forms on her face. And she breaks out in laughter. For she had joy that came in the morning. And try as she may, she couldn't keep this joy down. I want you all to remember what Eve remembered. She remembered the brightness and she remembered the voice and she remembered the promise of God. God said that despite her sin and despite her many griefs and despite her many sorrows, her seed, her seed would crush the head of that slimy, devious creature, the serpent. And so she can move on from that pain. That God in all his mercy, God in all his grace, keeps his promise. He promised to Eve that Eve's offspring would destroy her enemy that tempted her in the first place. He'll not get away with a thing. He will be destroyed. God's got this, y'all. And we can all say hallelujah. hallelujah. Eve receives redemption. Yeah. Eve receives new life. Yeah. Glory to God, y'all. Like Eve, there's help for you and there's help for me. Think on this. Isaiah says it best. God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get worn out by our sins. He doesn't pause to even catch his breath. And he knows everything we've ever done inside and out. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Jesus, y'all, he allowed Eve to save faith. Eve saved faith despite her sin. Redemption has the same face yesterday and forever. The Lord does not change. Let us not give up when trials come our way. But most of all, let us treasure God's word in our heart so that we may not sin against him. I hope and pray that you remember that all God asks us to do is to believe in him and we have redemption. 
we have eternal life. We can find strength, peace, and joy in him. Our Father God, who from the beginning of the fall of Eve, from the beginning of time, have our best interests at heart. Go to him at all times, even when we sin. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have listened today, I pray you understand.